unmute this bomb. On Zoom meetings, work happened today. Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night prayer, praise, and Bible study. Um, we're here in the Deacon Best Conference Room at the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church and we welcome all of you who are here with us tonight on Zoom or any of our other platforms, uh, perhaps Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we trust that uh, today has been a good day for you. And we thank the Lord for your presence with us uh, remotely tonight. And then even for uh, those who are here in the conference room, we praise God for you tonight. Um, before we look at the, uh, the list uh, of the sick uh, and the shut-in, the special prayer list and the bereavement list, uh, and we were asked to add the name of Mother Jenkins to the special prayer list tonight, so we want to uh, be mindful to pray for her as well. Uh, before we look at that list, I'd like to uh, call on a couple of, of you who are with us tonight to, to lift up those three lists. I see Deacon Fields is with us tonight. Um, and if you're in a posture uh, where you might be able to pray Deacon Fields, I'm gonna ask that you would uh, lift up uh, the list of the sick uh, and the shut in and uh, see uh, Deacon Calhoun, I would ask if you will, Deacon, to pray for the special prayer list. And uh, I believe uh, Deacon Damone Jordan is with us tonight. I'm gonna ask him to pray for those who are in bereavement. Um, before we pull up the list, let us just open in prayer um, and ask the Lord to, to be in charge of this next hour or so of prayer and Bible study. Uh, let's look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we give you praise and glory tonight for who you are. Uh, you are our God, the true and living God. You are the God who has all power in your hands. You are um, the God who is the creator of this entire universe. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the saints uh, would often say, you are the God who sits high uh, and you look low, Lord. We're so thankful for that. Uh, we are your creatures and we worship and praise you. Um, we say hallelujah and give your name high praise, Lord, uh, because you're worthy of all praise, God. And we um, confess today that we've sinned and uh, missed the mark, come short of your glory, God. And we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of all sin, uh, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Lord. You said if we uh, hide iniquity in our heart that you would not hear our prayer. So, Lord, we open up our hearts to you. We agree um, that we haven't done everything you told us to do, Lord. And uh, we agree that uh, we've even done some things that you told us not to do, God. And we just confess and we come uh, asking that you would have mercy and forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Uh, now, God, we just uh, thank you for another chance. 
Lord, we thank you for keeping us through this day. We don't want to take it for granted um, that we were able to move about today. Some people were on dangerous highways. Uh, some people were walking across dangerous roadways. Uh, some people stayed in the home all day, but danger was all around them and they didn't even know it, Lord. And you have kept us, Lord, and we just want to say thank you. Um, we thank you, Lord, because we didn't get that phone call, calls that we've had before that have really uh, turned the direction of our lives. They've shaken us. They've confused us. They've left us hurting, Lord. We thank you that we did not get that call today. Lord, you've been good to us, and we just want to say thank you, Lord. And now, oh God, as we uh, prepare for this time of study, we pray that you would fill us afresh uh, with the person of your spirit, oh God. We pray that he would be in control, um, having control our mind, our thoughts, our lips, and then, Lord, have you open up our hearts to the truth of your word. We pray it in that name that is above every name, Lord, the name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. And we all agree with that prayer and say, amen. amen. And thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is the intercessory prayer list. Uh, I believe uh, we have, uh, let's see, your Mac will sleep soon unless plugged into a power outlet. All right. Uh, we're going to have to get Devon back in here, but let's go ahead and pray for the sick and the shut-in, um, uh, Deacon Fields, if you're available. Amen. Man, I need some power here to go. Our Father and our God, we come this evening, my Father, on another Wednesday night to study your word, my Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will hear our prayer as we pray this intercessory prayer for those on our prayer list right here, my Father. Each name, one by one, and name by name, my Father. Please, sir, God. Lord God, you know where every pain is. You know where it begins and where it ends, my Father. We pray that you touch their bodies in the name of Jesus. Whatever the situation is, my Father, you're already there. Please, sir, God, hear our prayer on their behalf, my Heavenly Father. Then, Lord God, we pray for Reverend Dan tonight, my Father, as he brings forth, Lord God, your word, Lord God, on this Wednesday night Bible study. Take him out of self, my Heavenly Father, as he brings forth the lesson tonight, Lord God. And open our hearts and our minds, Lord God, that we'll be receptive to thy holy word. Please, Lord God, each one that are on the air and on the Lord God that's with us tonight, Lord God. Help us tonight, we pray thee. We need you, Lord God, in all our ways, my Heavenly Father. We need you, my Father. We pray for the less fortunate than ourselves, homeless, sick, and the afflicted, oh God. Please, oh God, we pray thee. And then, Lord, we pray, thanking you most of all for Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son. Absolutely. Father God, who died on the cross, that we may have a right to the tree of life, oh God. Then, Father God, we ask that you forgive us for all sins, all evil thoughts, all wicked imaginations, whatever we said, done, and thought, that was just pleasing unto thy holy sight, Master. Forgive us, we pray thee, O God. All these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We humbly pray this prayer. Amen, and thank you, God. Amen. 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 Continuing in prayer to Heavenly Father, Lord, we Again, come thanking you, O oh Father God, for this opportunity to come before your throne of mercy and grace, Lord, to proclaim who you are, Lord, who is the all-knowing, almighty, eternal present, eternally present Lord, who is the sovereign creator of all things within the heavens and upon the earth, Lord. We just come offering you the highest praise of hallelujah, Lord. The, your word tells us that there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, Lord. So we just acknowledge you as the most high God, Lord. Just mm -hmm. come thanking you, O oh Father God, for this day that you blessed us with. Lord, I too come acknowledging that I've fallen short of your glory, asking, O oh Father God, for forgiveness of sins of omission and commission, Lord God, that my prayers to you would not be hindered, O oh Lord. 
God. And then just thanking you, Father God, for this privilege of prayer and this opportunity to stand in the gaps on the behalf of those who have asked for intercessory prayer uh, from we, your saints, Lord. So I lift up those individuals who are on our special prayer list, Lord God, uh, starting with uh, our pastoral family, Lord God, uh, the past, Pastor Bates, Sister Mavis Bates, and family, Lord God, we just come lifting them up to you, Lord, thanking you for answered prayer, Lord, as you healed them uh, recently, Lord God, from an affliction, Lord God, we thank you for blessing and keeping them, oh Lord God, during that time, Lord, and then we lift up uh, the Cannon family, Lord God, uh, we just pray and thank you, Lord God, for having brought those uh, that family into our lives, Lord God. So we come lifting up uh, Sister Minnie Ruth Cannon, Sister Tammy, Lord God, Brother Lester Jr., and the entirety uh, of that family, oh Lord God, the siblings, Lord, just praying for their continued strength, oh Lord God. And then, Lord, we lift up the Cornerstone family in its entirety, Lord God. You know all of the needs, Lord. You know the spiritual needs, Lord God. You know the physical needs, yeah. Lord. You know Yes. You know, the emotional needs, Father God, for you are omniscient, Lord God, you know all things, Lord. So we just trust in you uh, for for prayer, oh Lord God. We, your word tells us that we are to petition prayer, Lord God, on behalf of each other, each other Lord. So we just thank you for that opportunity. And then I come lifting up the, each and every other individual that are on this list, Lord. I don't know all the needs, Lord, but uh, we know that you do. Oh, Lord God, we just come trusting you, oh, Lord God, that uh, you would be there on their behalf. If they need comfort, Lord God, we pray for comfort. If they need strength, Lord God, we pray for strength, oh, Lord God, whatever the need may be. Lord, and then uh, I, too, Lord, would ask that you would continue to bless us all, Lord, by providing us a a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that our minds would be set on the lesson that will be brought forth this evening by Reverend Dan, Lord, that our hearts would be uh, open, that we would get what you would want us to take away, oh Lord, from this lesson, Father, and we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, this in the name of your darling son, Jesus, I do pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dean. Continue with Continuing in prayer, Lord, we just want to come just saying it's an honor to have the privilege to pray. Yes, Lord, Lord, we just come thanking you, Lord, for just who you are in our lives. Mm -hmm. But then most of all, Lord, we thank you for your burial, your resurrection, and your power that you shed it, your blood that we can uh, come to you in bereavement. Those that, are, that lost loved ones just recently, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you went down into the grave, Lord, and you rose from the dead that we may have comfort in that knowing that there that we will see them again. So yes. we just contact you for those that are on the list. We continue to wipe their tears, continue to comfort them wherever they need uh, comforting, oh Father. This we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, brothers, for uh, leading us uh, during that time of prayer. I certainly do appreciate that. Uh, want to uh, go ahead and pick up uh, where we left off uh, last week uh, in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We all uh, know that verse. This is uh, really, um, if you've been connected with Cornerstone any length of time, uh, this is a verse that you are very familiar with. Um, however, we know that um, sometimes being familiar with a text, sometimes you get so close to it that you miss you miss a lot of the principles that that lie therein. And we all know that the, the word of God, there is no single verse that we could totally exhaust uh, in in scripture. Uh, I believe that you may be able to get the handout via a uh, PDF. It's probably in the chat box. Uh, Deacon Calhoun probably has it there so you can uh, download it in, in, in PDF form, but it's just a, a one page, uh, one page lesson. Um, last week, uh, the first principle 
um, from this verse that I wanted everyone to really get a handle on. And it's in relation to our two natures. Uh, let me just read Second uh, Corinthians 5. I'm going to start at verse uh, number 16. And I'm going to go down uh, actually to the end of the, the, the chapter. I'm going to start at verse 16. And again, really 17 is what we're dealing with. We're really just looking at a couple of words, but uh, some of verse 16 and verse 18 also comes into this lesson as well. So let's start there at verse number 16. Uh, it says, therefore, I'm reading from the New King James Bible. It says, therefore, from now on, uh, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if any one is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. <clears throat> that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What a great, uh, what a great read there. And then right dropped in the center of that is verse number 17 that we're looking at today. Um, when we looked at that verse, um, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And we looked at that word new uh, in the original language. And we saw that it had a dual meaning uh, that we are new um, in at least two ways. Uh, once a person becomes a believer in Christ, we're gonna do a quick review and then we'll finish those four bullet points on the bottom of your page. Uh, we become new in form uh, in that before we were saved, we only had one nature. Uh, once we accepted Jesus Christ, he gave us his nature. Mm -hmm. Now we have living in us the nature of Jesus Christ. So we, we became new in form. We were single natured persons. Uh, once we accepted Christ, now we have two natures. Uh, we have our old nature. And one of the things about the old nature uh, that we saw in last week's lesson is that the old nature, what, will never change. The old nature cannot be changed. But you know what? And Pastor Bates, at the end of last week, he came on and uh, we, we looked at Galatians 5, uh, 22. And even when you read in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, I believe around verse 20, um, look, uh, we are to crucify the old nature. Uh, we, we now live in Christ, right? Uh, he was crucified, uh, his flesh was crucified, um, so we should crucify the flesh. That's our new nature uh, in Christ. Um, it is our goal through feeding our new nature, uh, feeding in the word of God, uh, feeding our new nature through prayer, to crucify our old nature, to render him uh, a dead man. Uh, he's still there, he's still on the inside, but uh, our new nature and our old nature, they're at enmity with one another. They're at odds with one another. Um, neither of them like what the other does. Look, they cannot stand one another, but they're both living on the inside of us. 
So as believers, it should be our goal to render the old nature dormant with all of his works, all of the works of the old nature we want to render dormant by feeding our new nature because you cannot recondition old nature. Uh, you cannot revamp him. You can't remodel him. Um, you know what, you, you can take a pig and put a bow tie on him and paint his pig nails and all that you want to. Uh, but as soon as he gets to the mud hole, he gonna jump right back in the mud because he has the nature of a pig. A pig is gonna do uh, what a pig is designed to do and so will your old nature. The only hope we have as believers is to render the old nature dormant by crucifying him. So the old nature is, is, is never gonna change. So thank God we've become new. He made us new. He didn't make us over. He made us new. He didn't uh, uh, remodel us or, or, or try to make us, but he made us brand new. And he also made us new in quality. We have become better people. Look, saints of God should be the best people in the world. Uh, a, if you have a Christian as your neighbor, that should be your best neighbor. And we have to be careful about how we deport ourselves as Christians. Uh, th this lesson, it, it, it really says it all when you read through the whole text. It says we've been given what? This ministry of what? Reconciliation. Uh, the, the world is watching us. And God has given us his son uh, in the person of the Holy Spirit so that we can become better people because the world sees God through our lens, right? The, the only Bible that many people will read is going to be you. They're going to see what God is all about by looking at us, right? We are to reconcile the world unto God because he has reconciled us unto himself, right? So now we are in this ministry with the Lord to reconcile people to him. Better in quality. We were looking at uh, Galatians chapter five, right? Galatians chapter five. Uh, let's uh, pull that uh, up if you have it in, in your Bibles. Uh, Galatians chapter five. I'm going to start at verse... 16, and I'm reading from the American Standard Bible, NASB. Uh, it says, but I say, walk by the Spirit, <clears throat> to, to, to walk. That, that word means uh, your, your consistent way of behavior. You know, uh, how are you living? Uh, that, that's our, our walk. Uh, it says, walk by the Spirit. And here's the promise. Here's the promise if you walk by the Spirit. And walking by the Spirit means being controlled and led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Uh, he says, walk by the Spirit. And here's the promise. You will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Very, very simple. If, if you want to defeat uh, the ways of the old nature, if you want to render the old nature dormant, here's what you do. Walk by the spirit. Allow yourself to be spirit controlled. God has done the work. He's given us his Holy Spirit. We have to allow him to rule and to reign uh, in our lives. When we get down toward the end of the lesson, uh, and I hope uh, we do today, uh, one of the bullet points uh, of being a new creation is we have a new love of self. Uh, we don't love ourselves the way we used to before we were saved. Uh, we, we had a different kind of love for ourselves before we became believers. Uh, but once a person becomes a believer, uh, we look at ourselves differently. We, we look at ourselves differently. Verse 17, for the flesh, watch this, it sets its desires against the spirit. It, it means that they're contrary to one another. They really don't like each other. One is set against the other and the spirit against the flesh. For these are 
in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are, and then it gives this list. And really, it, it's, an it's an exhaustive because you know what? I, I, you know, pe people have ratified this list. They, they've added to it. People have come up with stuff now. Um, this list is inexhaustible. But here's what they say. Immorality, impurity, sensuality. Uh, verse 20, idolatry, their sorcery enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissension, factions, all of these are works of the flesh, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, all of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things. Now, it doesn't mean those who commit such things. This word practice means that this is your lifestyle. Uh, that's why we believe that there are certain uh, lifestyles, and when you read this verse, that make it tough to believe that a person has really received the Spirit of God. Those who practice such things will not, what does it say? Inherit the kingdom of God. It's a difference between committing a sin and practicing sin. Practicing sin suggests that you have a sinful lifestyle, regardless of what the word of God teaches. Uh, but the word is clear. If you have a lifestyle uh, that is one where you practice sin, this text says that it you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Look, we are sinners who've been saved by grace, and we shall sin um, as long as we are in these bodies. But look, we're doing our very best not to commit sin, and heaven forbid that we have a lifestyle that practices sin. And now, the contrasting conjunction, but the fruit of the spirit. Now, the spirit is in contrast to the lust of the flesh. The fruit of the spirit is love. Uh, that is the one characteristic that kind of uh, encapsulates all of these other characteristics. Peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, amen, and it says against, against such things, there is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus, here you go, have what? Crucified the flesh with his passions and desires, right? So let's live on the second side of this. Let's uh, make it our intention to be spirit led and spirit controlled. Then we have the promise that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because we are new, right? New in form, new in quality. We are better people than we were before we asked Christ into our life, right? Better people, new in form. We have two natures, one of which it is our intention to daily crucify, to render him dormant. And we are what new creatures. Now we were, before we were just uh, creatures of the flesh. We were just human beings, but now we are spiritual creatures. We have been made alive spiritually. Um, if you turn to Ephesians, uh, let, let's look at this and we're gonna run through this quickly. Ephesians uh, chapter two. Let's see if I can navigate through here. Ephesians chapter two. And we are new creations. We are new creations. We were born spiritually dead. We had no spiritual connection uh, to God. 
in Ephesians, you were, it says there, boy, look at this, and you were dead. That's how we were before we met Christ in your trespasses and sins. That's that, that's all of us before we met Christ. It says, and went you formally, there, there you go, walked according to the course of this world. That was our lifestyle. That was our practice. That was our behavior. And then I believe when you get to verse number four, uh, when you get to verse number four, uh, we see, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead, that lets us know we didn't have anything to do with it, right? Uh, we didn't have anything to do uh, with uh, us coming to Christ because we were dead and a dead person uh, has no activity. He, he can't do anything. Christ, uh, uh, God drew us to himself. He's the one who did uh, the drawing. He's the one who saved us in our trespasses and made us, here it is, alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. It's a gift. Um, you didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. Um, we weren't wise enough to make a choice for Christ. God drew us to him by his spirit. So we are now spiritual uh, creatures. We're new creatures. We've been made alive spiritually. And we looked at uh, how Jesus Christ uh, <clears throat> uh, is a spiritual creature. And the same way he became a fleshly uh, person when he became Jesus Christ uh, in the flesh, we became spiritual beings when we accepted him as our personal Lord and Savior. So a Christian is a person who has a new spiritual nature that lives in the same body that we're born with. Look, I might look the same on the inside, on the outside, but once I become a believer, I am a new creation. The Lord is not going to impute any of my, he's not going to charge me with any of my sins now that I am a new creation. And when we looked at that verse, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That's the first thing that has to change. Uh, last week, we said that oftentimes we talk to people who are looking for things to change in their life. Has anybody ever spoken to anybody like that? You know, I just want my life to change. I don't want to be in this type of situation anymore. I don't want to be uh, uh, in, uh, involved in this activity anymore. People are often looking for things to change, but things won't change until that person changes. The text says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And then it says, what? Old things. things pass away. If you want some things to pass away, the first thing that has to happen is you have to become a new creation. Uh, things are not going to change unless you change in your creation. You have to become born again. A person's life is not going to change uh, in any relative matter unless they become a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Well, what becomes new? And that's our lesson for today. Let's look at what becomes new. Before anything becomes new, you must be born again. So if you're, if you're watching tonight uh, and you're not sure if you've ever accepted Jesus Christ into your life today, that's going to be step one, to accept him as Lord and Savior and become a new creation. And then you can experience the second part of that verse. Old things will begin to pass away. And all things are, it literally says, are becoming new. It, it, it's always happening in the life of a believer. The first thing that's gonna become new is a new love of self. 
We are going, when you become a new believer, you're going to uh, look at yourself differently. Uh, an improper love of self uh, is, is the root principle of the life that is lived without God, an improper love of self. With your old nature, the only way you're going to love yourself is improperly. It's going to be selfishly. It's sad to say, but the most selfish persons are the very people who are usually ready to criticize selfishness in other people. Selfishness and improper love of self. It is the leading cause of people living without Christ because they pay too much attention to who? To themselves. Their central focus is on themselves. Okay, you guys remember four spiritual laws. Remember four, Sister Bell says, mm -hmm. uh, we have the yellow booklet and we have the blue booklet. The problem is when who's on the throne? Self. That's the problem. The natural man, the person who's unsaved, the big S who is self is sitting on the throne of their life. But when the person is saved, and they're living the spirit-filled life, Christ is on the throne. Self is inside the circle once you're saved, but he's not sitting on the throne. The root cause of a person not accepting Christ is that they are happy and content to have self on the throne. The root problem is simply an improper love of oneself, selfishness. Now, it's going to express itself. It'll show itself in various ways. Uh, you'll find a person uh, overindulges, self-indulgence, right? Uh, self-consideration, self-consciousness, self-centered. That person is going to be self-centered. All of these are expressions of improper love for oneself. Someone says that if you want to be miserable, if you want to be a miserable person, what do they say? Spend all of your time thinking about who? Yourself. Yourself. People tend uh, to be more well-balanced. They tend to be happier people, more joyous people when they spend more time considering other people. Those are the people that have a more fulfilling life. People who spend time thinking about other people and not always about themselves. Uh, selfishness is one of the biggest problems of the sinner. Uh, uh, Romans uh, chapter seven is a verse that we looked at uh, when it deals with uh, the, the, the inner self, uh, three big enemies uh, of, the, of the believer. One of them is self, one of them is Satan, and the third is society. Sometimes our biggest enemy is ourself, particularly in the person of, of that old nature, right? Your biggest enemy. And then there's Satan. And then there is society. We want to be wary of those three. As believers, self problems, Satan problems, society is a problem. All of these attitudes of self are wrapped up and entangled in the old nature. And it takes the new nature of Christ to render him dormant. There's a battle happening on the inside. There's a battle happening on the inside of every believer. And Paul talks about it in Romans 7, uh, verses 14 through 25. Uh, you guys, uh, when, when, when you get a chance, uh, uh, read through that uh, carefully, carefully. I'm, I'm going to just uh, uh, pick up a part of it. Uh, I'm going to pick up at verse number 20, but you want to start at verse number 14. I'm going to start at 20. It says, and so 
if I don't do what I know is right, he says, I'm no longer the one doing these evil things. The sin that lives in me is what does them. He's talking about his old nature. The law has shown me that something in me, the old nature, keeps me from doing what I know is right. With my whole heart, there it is, the new nature right? I agree with the law of God. That's the new nature. You got two people living on the inside, but in every part of me, I discover something fighting against my mind, and it makes me a prisoner of sin that controls everything I do. What a miserable person I am. Who will rescue me? from this body that is doomed to die. And then he concludes, thank God, Jesus Christ, a man will rescue me. So with my mind, I serve the law of God. Although here it is, my selfish desires make me serve the law of sin. Be careful about self and selfishness. Your old nature is only about self, right? It, 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 it has an improper love of self. This is the struggle of the two natures going on inside of every believer. And we have the victory. We can win the struggle through our new nature, who is Jesus Christ. The new creature in Christ experiences a new love of self. He's the one who shows us how we should consider ourselves. Selfishness is no longer the leading desire. He becomes God-centered rather than self-centered. So Christ shows us how to first love God, right? Put him at the center of our life. When he's on the throne, we have a proper love of ourselves. But if we put ourselves on the throne, we have an improper love of ourself and you find yourself in that inner struggle always wanting to do the right thing but self is always going to intervene and cause us to do the wrong thing so we have a new love of self we also have a new relationship with other people uh that's really seen in in verse number 16 uh we're in verse 17 but if you back up to verse number 16 that's why i wanted to read it uh, when we started the lesson, uh, I'll read it again. It says, therefore, from now on, here it is, we regard no one according to the flesh. Very, very important. We have a new relationship with other people because now as a believer, we don't regard others according to the flesh. We regard others according to what? To, to the new nature. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. It's a spiritual relationship, right? We, we have a new relationship with other people. To be a new creature in Christ, uh, everything has changed. Uh, it's placed us in new relationship with other people. Our relationship with others has been reshaped. It's been changed. It's been remolded. When we come to the full knowledge of the fact that God accepts us as we are, then we become equipped to help others as they are. See, 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 here's, here's the problem. We want God to view us um, as, uh, as, as new people in Christ, right? But we have a tendency to look at people according to the flesh, right? We, 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 we judge them by their mistakes and by their errors. And it, it, as, as, uh, it, it's very, it can be really become problematic uh, outside of church. It, it's, it's, it's easy to do inside the walls of the sanctuary when we have on our Christian smiles, right? Our, our Sunday smiles. Uh, but boy, when you get out into places like the workplace and you have to deal uh, with people who are unloving and people who are unfair and people who don't treat you right. But we have to have a new relationship with other people. So how do we view them? In one of two ways. 
either they are brothers and sisters in Christ and we have the same heavenly father or number two, we have to view them from an evangelistic perspective as a person who does not know the Lord. And we have to relate to them as one who needs Christ. Therefore, our relationship to them is now based on a saint uh, who has what? The ministry of reconciliation. Because God has reconciled us, he now has us in a position of ministers to reconcile that person back unto him. So that's the new relationship that we now have with other people. So we have to look at them differently. Paul says, uh, we regard no one according to the flesh. We don't evaluate others upon as to how they look. We don't evaluate others uh, according to their attitudes. Uh, this uh, is uh, also a lesson uh, that's uh, appropriate for, for, for young adults. Uh, you, you're looking for a mate, right? Uh, when you see that sister or sister, you see that brother. Uh, you cannot evaluate them only according uh, to the flesh. And th there is no evangelistic dating, amen? Uh, we have to evaluate them according to our new nature. First, they are a brother or sister in Christ. If they're not saved, then it is an opportunity to win a person to Christ first before we move any further in that relationship. So being a new creature in Christ means uh, that uh, we are different uh, than people who are not saved. Uh, the new creature in Christ's attitudes towards other people has to change. Um, attitudes such as hostility. Uh, we, we cannot dislike or hate people. That, that, that's not for believers. We have to have a new attitude uh, toward other people. The real test of how close we are to the Lord um, is really uh, how close we are to other people. Uh, uh, 1 John 4 uh, and, and 20. Uh, let's see if we can get someone to, to unmute and, and to read uh, that verse for us. Uh, you know, uh, we can't really treat other people uh, uh, in such a way, and, and then we, we, we're smiling in God and in Jesus' face all day, but we're sneering uh, at, at other people. Uh, the Bible says that that's not how Christians ought to uh, carry themselves. Why? because we have a new relationship with other people once we become new creations. Who has 1 John 4 and 20? 4 and 20, 1 John 4 and 20. If anyone says, this is the New International Version, if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whomever, whoever loves God must also love his brother. My, my, my. And I mean that, <laughs> thank you, Brother Martin. That's, that's pretty plain. And the other morning on, on the prayer line on Tuesday morning, we, we kind of looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. When you read through there and you look at what the description of love is, and boy, uh, when, when we had that uh, that prayer call on Tuesday, no sooner than I got to work, you know what? I got tested. <laughs> I, I got tested. Uh, and it, it works that way. It really works that way that the Lord, he wants to see if all that stuff that you testify about is really real. And, and he'll do it in the workplace. He'll do it in your family. He'll do it at church. Uh, but I mean, look, we need to love people uh, because Christ loved us. We shout and say how much we love the Lord and we sing songs. I mean, we really jerk on that one, how I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. And then we go uh, to people on our workplace and we can't stand those folk. And the Bible says, John writes clearly that that's not okay. We have to love people who are unlovable. Why? Because God loved us when we were unlovable. Right. How can we say, thank you, Brother Martin, that we love God and we can't stand the people 
that we spend 10 hours with on the job every day. We have to get those relationships right, you all. And the, you know what? The onus is on us because we are new creations. Yeah. A lot of those people are not. We are different in form. We have two natures. They only have one. We're different in quality. We have all of that fruit of the spirit that's been imputed to us by the person of the Holy Spirit. Those people don't have that. The responsibility to make the relationships right is on us as believers. It's not on the sinner. Can somebody say amen? amen? But yeah, I was tested at work. I had to go back and say, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm going to fix it all. And, 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 and when, when I told that to the brother, you know what he told me? Yeah, that sounds right anyway. <laughs> he just kind of poured more coats on my head and I just went on here and walked away and said okay Lord I, that's what you get for uh, bringing it up I guess <laughs> but yes we have to love those people we have to take the low road uh, even when they are wrong we have to take the low road because they're looking at us I know it's, it's a hard road but it's true it's true being a new creature in Christ, uh, it means that we can look at others as those for whom we have a responsibility. Uh, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. You have a responsibility. Uh, we have to be gentle and kind towards people. That is our responsibility. Why? Because we are new creatures in Christ. Uh, Paul told the Corinthians, therefore, from now on, we recognize, this is verse 16 again, we recognize no man according to the flesh. We don't look at them according to the flesh. We have to look at them according to the spirit because we are new creatures in Christ. In one of two ways, there are brothers and sisters in Christ. We have the same daddy and God is not gonna allow two of his children to be at odds with one another. Or number two, we have to look at them through the lens of this is our person that we are in ministry to reconcile unto God. So our attitude, our behavior, our relationship to them has to change. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Philip's translation of the New Testament, uh, he, he has uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 this way. This means that our knowledge of men can no longer be based on their outward lives. Stop looking at people uh, on how they look on the outside. You know what? Because we used to look the same way, right? God sees us uh, and, and he saw us at our level worst. So let's not look at people um, who, are, who are, are not saved according to how they look on the outside. Let's look at the potential that God has for them on the inside. We are not to love people because of what we what we can see in them, but because God, because God made them. If God loves them, we have a responsibility to love them too. So uh, a, a, a new relationships, a new love for self, new relationship with other people, and a new love for the world. Uh, we're not going to finish uh, we got about seven minutes. <laughs> We're not going to finish. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it again or uh, we'll deal with it on the prayer line sometime. But we have to have also a new love for the world. And that comes uh, from verse uh, number uh, 18. Uh, if you look at verse number 18, it says, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Uh, we have to have a new love for the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son in order to reconcile the world. And we are partners with God in this ministry of reconciliation. So we have to have a new world, a new love, uh, uh, not just for uh, ourselves, our family, our church members, our community, but also for the whole world. Uh, because that is God's plan, is to reconcile the world unto himself. Uh, and then uh, at some point in time, we'll look at the benefits of being new creatures in Christ. Uh, let me just give them to you real quick, and you can write them down. Uh, we have a new future. 
we have a new future. And uh, uh, sometimes I get so excited about that, I can hardly hold my seat uh, because I really, really uh, know where I was headed. Uh, again, uh, most of you know that I became a believer uh, later in life. Uh, so I, I have uh, uh, an old nature, he's still inside of me, but, but my old nature had a lot of experience. Uh, he, uh, he, 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 he was in control for about 28 years, 27 years of my life. Uh, and so I, I reflect a lot on, on where I could have wound up. And I'm very, very grateful uh, that I have a new future in Christ. Uh, and I, when I look at all of the benefits uh, that I have, one is reconciliation. That's in the A part of verse 18. Uh, the second benefit is uh, I, I've been enrolled and now I'm in the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, it's, it's a ministry that all of us have. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a Sunday school teacher. You don't have to be a deacon. You don't have to sing in the choir. All believers have this ministry of reconciliation. And then we also have uh, the benefit of having Christ as our sin offering. That's verse 21. Christ, uh, you know what? He died for me. Uh, and, and all of us uh, should personalize that as, as though you were the only one who needed to be saved. If I was the only one who needed to be saved, Jesus would have died just for me. He would have died. He who knew no sin, God made him to be sin. He, he made Christ to be sin. He was our sin offering that we might become the righteousness of God. That's what we are. We are now the righteousness of God uh, because Christ was made our sin offering. That's uh, three of the benefits of being new creatures in Christ. This is just the milk of the word, uh, a verse uh, that we were taught in a CBT survival kit. Uh, Sister Renee, I think you may have been one of my survival kit, uh, Hurstville, one of my survival kit instructors. Uh, and wow, uh, you know, just what a joy it is to, to look at some of these basic rudiments of the word. And there's so much life in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, uh, that I still get excited about a verse uh, that I was introduced to uh, over 30 years ago. And I just thank God for it. And if you are here today and you're on one of our platforms uh, and you are not uh, uh, a believer in Jesus Christ, you can change that today uh, by simply asking him to come into your life through prayer, recognizing uh, that you are a sinner and you need to be saved. Uh, and agreeing that uh, Christ is God's only provision uh, for sin, that he died on the cross on a Friday for our sins. Uh, and he rose early Sunday morning for our salvation. And by accepting what he did on Calvary into your life personally, he can become today, even right now, your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, let us bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you for the truth of your word, O oh God. And Lord, uh, we agree that you died for our sins and you rose for our salvation. And Lord, uh, we accept what you did on Calvary unto salvation. Many of us have done it long ago. Some may even be praying the prayer to accept you as Lord and Savior right now. Lord, we believe you in your word that if we believe that, that we shall be saved. If we believe uh, that you are Lord and that God raised you from the dead, that we shall be saved. We thank you for that truth found in your word. And now, oh God, we thank you that you've made us new creations, new in form. We have your new nature living on the inside, new in quality. We're better people because we live with the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. Oh God, thank you for giving us 
the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, we pray now that we have a new outlook on who we are, that you are our first love, that you are on the throne of our lives. Lord, help us with our relationship with others around us. Help us not to look at them according to the flesh, but look at the potential that you have in that person. Allow us to see them as a brother or sister in Christ or as an opportunity for witnessing that they too might accept you as Lord and Savior. And then, oh God, help us to have a new outlook on the world that we, like you, would desire to reconcile the world unto yourself. Lord, we thank you and we praise you because you've been so good to us. Lord, we pray um, as Peter did, that all men come to a knowledge of you as Lord and Savior. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now tonight, before we go, let us uh, be a blessing uh, to the ministry and also to the minister. Let's be a blessing to, uh, to Pastor Bates tonight. Uh, let us uh, give, you see the various uh, ways to give. Um, those who give remotely mostly would use Zelle. Um, see Stone Can Die Finance, you see it on the screen there at gmail.com. Some of, some of us are here in the sanctuary. We'll just slide it down to Sister Bell. And she'll take care of it that way. Um, and we also, um, you know, whatever it takes, uh, whatever is convenient for you, if you want to mail it in, that's fine. If you want to call, we can have one of our officers come by and pick it up, or you can drop it in the, the mail slot. And, we haven't heard in a while. Come down, ring the bell, and Sister Bell will answer the bell, and she will receive your gifts. Uh, there are some. Uh, how do you upload access to lesson on Zoom? Amen. Uh, I'll let Brother Calhoun speak to that. I think you just click on it. I believe it's a PDF. You can just click on it, and you, you should be able to open it. Uh, in, a, in a PDF form if you have Word on your computer. Yeah, that's correct, Reverend Dan. Cer certain devices don't actually see the documents in, in the chat. So what we did last week, I, I don't know that we did it this week, but last week we also included the document in the Cornerstone Church app notification so that people could just, you know, bounce. So there were a few different, a couple of different mechanisms that were used to access the documents. Okay. Well, if you want it, I'm, uh, I'm sure we can get it. Pastor Bates, good evening. Good evening. Can you all hear me? Oh, there I go. I couldn't hear myself here. Good evening. Another great lesson from you, man. I was thinking about something that you that you uh, said in, in terms of talking about um, being a new creation and not somebody who's reconditioned. Um, that is a faulty thinking on regeneration and on re and and then becoming a new creature. And you even have some fellowships that has that name, and biblically oh. it don't fit. Second Corinthians five seventeen. So, man, thank you for bringing that out um, and doing um, the awesome job that you always do, making the lesson very plain and clear. And um, you put it in a way that we're able to grasp it and to remind us of those essential truths that will take us through the entirety of this life and will worship and celebrate and praise God throughout eternity for these truths that make it possible for, for us to have right uh, standing with God. So thank you uh, for sharing that. Uh, I want to encourage us to be on tomorrow morning for our Thursday morning prayer call. Uh, we've been having a great week this week and the Lord has been answering um, our prayers and um, it's, it's just you have to be a part of it to know what we're talking about. So I encourage you to join us tomorrow and hang with us. Um, three days a week we pray and we've been doing it over two years now. 
uh, going on three years. So you see the number there and um, we hope you'll be able to be with us tomorrow. All right, that's it for me, Reverend Jones. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bates. Uh, let, let us close if there's nothing else before us. Father, we thank you and we give you uh, the praise for the power and the truth of your word, Lord. Uh, help us to live by, uh, not just to read it and study it, but help us uh, to be doers of your word. And then, Lord, we celebrate you um, as we see the truth of your word come to fruition in our lives. Now, God, we just pray that you give us grace as we move from this place to, to home or to wherever we might be going. Keep us in your perfect care. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Amen. Amen. Good night. 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 Good night.